Hey everybody, I'm Mark, and we have a guest today. This is this is Kevin Gossett. Hello. Um, Kevin uh, is, we met through the RPF about four years ago, three yeah. years ago, something like that, and uh, Kevin works with us from time to time. We did the National Video Game Museum. We've done, what else? Um, uh, some installs with Ralph Lauren. Uh, we did Stella McCartney together. Yeah. Um, uh, so Kevin is just a, a friend of the shop. He's got a, a very similar skill set to everything we do here because he's with the RPF and that's what those guys do. Um, but uh, we call in Kevin when we just need somebody and, uh, and we know he's somebody that we can work with and also uh, uh, he's got some skills we don't have which comes in handy from time to time. Yes, it does. <laughs> so what'd you bring with us, Kevin? I brought this handy little idol it was a high definition 3D print. I've got a, a resin based 3D printer. It's a Form Labs Form 2. So it actually uses resin to create the print instead of uh, extruded plastic like your typical hobby home printer. Uh, Mark said he needed a really nice, highly detailed piece. Uh, so this was perfect uh, for that type of application. And if you can see, take a look at some of the detail on here. <clears throat> this is pretty much straight off the printer. Uh, with a little bit of sanding, some primer, and we'll cut to a video that's going to show uh, the process I use to actually create it. Okay, so we have our model loaded into a program called NetFab. Uh, this is NetFab Basic, which is free. Uh, can do a lot of different things with NetFab. It's kind of a 3D printing Swiss Army knife, 3D modeling Swiss Army knife, if you will. Uh, a couple things that we're going to do today, we're going to scale our part to a particular size. Mark asked for the statue to be 10 inches tall, so we will change the scale to reflect that. We will make our print our model solid uh, it is actually hollow if you change the orientation here you can actually see this red area shows that it's actually a hollow model uh, and then you see this red ex uh, exclamation point in a triangle that tells you that there's an issue with the model itself um, most likely because the model was not created with the intention of 3d printing so these wall thick the wall thickness right here you can tell is really thin uh, which doesn't do well with 3D printing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this a solid piece rather than have it hollow. And then we're going to split the model up into a couple pieces so that it will actually fit onto the bed of my printer. I'm using an SLA machine. It's a Form Labs Form 2 printer, which is resin-based. It uses a photosensitive, UV-sensitive uh, liquid resin, and a laser actually draws uh, each layer onto the surface of the resin which creates the part uh, as it builds up each layer. So let's change our orientation back to vertical and we're going to first fix our scale. So we go to part and scale. Our tallest measurement, our biggest measurement is going to be our height. So we're going to change that to 254 millimeters, which is 10 inches. Next, we are going to split the model into two pieces. Uh, so first, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and if you'll notice, right around the waist area, there's a little bit of a line that's right here. There's actually kind of a join where the torso meets the bottom half, and that's a great place for us to split up the model, because once we glue it together after it's printed, uh, it's gonna be less finishing work, less seam work for us to have to fix. So. On this uh, right side panel over here, you'll see an X, a Y, and a Z with sliders. That will actually allow us to change the position of where the cut line is going to be. So if we look at our Y, uh, we shift it over closer to the middle. You'll see a green line start to appear from the bottom. There we go. And it kind of creeps up to where we want to go. Um, it is a little jerky, so I, what I like to do is I get it to a close enough spot and then I'll just adjust it manually. Uh, so let's see, 257 kind of splits the difference there, so let's go 257.5. 
and I think that's a really good spot. That's going to put us right above where that uh, little ledge is for the belt. Uh, so that will give us a nice clean spot for those two pieces to join together. So once you finish that, you just hit the Execute Cut button, and then Cut. And it will place that cut so that it separates the piece into two separate models. Alright, so at the top of this right side pane, if you click on the little plus sign there, it tells us cuts of Totem 1. So there's the first piece and the second piece. So now we have two separate pieces that we can actually print separately, uh, save separately. So we're going to export this as an STL. And we'll just save that. And you'll see a little window pop up. There we go. That red X tells us and uh, reflects back to this little exclamation point down here. It's not manifold, which means it's not watertight, uh, so it's going to have an issue printing. Um, so if we click repair, it's going to actually fill that in and make a nice solid piece. So there's one. We'll do the same for the second piece. Repair and export. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're going to switch over to our uh, slicing software for the form machine. It's called Preform. And we're going to load one of these pieces in so that we can get it ready for printing. So if we go to Open, we'll grab that first one. All right, so you can see we have our model. Uh, we want to change the orientation so we can get it vertical. There we go. Now the great thing about this software is it has a, an option where you can do a one-click print. So it will fix the orientation, it will generate your support structure, and it will place it uh, on the build platform where it thinks it best needs to be. Uh, sometimes that's great. Uh, however, sometimes it can do things that you don't want it to do. For instance, it might place these support structures on the front face here, which would not be great. There's a lot of detail that we would lose doing that uh, once we have to trim off those support pieces. So we want to actually orient it ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to play with the X, Y, and Z for orientation just to get ourselves a nice angled uh, layout. So we'll do, I like to go in 15 degree increments just to kind of get into a, a good position and that's actually pretty good. We might switch this up just a little bit. There we go. I think that's nice. So I'm happy with that orientation. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing it at an angle. The SLA machines, uh, like I said, they use resin so they actually draw from the bottom going up. So where this base is here, the build platform, is actually going to be inverted and it will drop itself into the bath of resin. The laser will draw each layer and it will raise up incrementally uh, with each layer. Uh, the support structures, which I will go ahead and create now, uh, you will see it's kind of like a scaffolding. Uh, so it's not a, a solid support structure like an FDM machine might create or a honeycomb. Uh, this is a little bit different. and. So that's why it, it lays at an angle. Uh, it will create the best orientation, the best finish possible. Okay, you can see how the support structure is created. Kind of pan around a little bit so you can see a little bit more. So it's almost like a crystalline tree that will support it. Uh, and that's because you want to have as few points of contact as possible. So it just has these little points that support each uh, area of the model as it's being printed. So once it's done printing, you can just snip those off with uh, a sprue cutter and you're good to go just about. And it's a little bit of fine sanding and you're, you're pretty much ready for paint or molding or whatever it is you're planning to do with your, your piece. So everything is good there. So we're going to send that to the printer.
blueprint is all finished, so let's take a look. And you can see how the build plate is inverted and the piece is hanging from it on that support structure. Got a nice, clean, clear, detailed piece. Closer look at some of that detail. And what that support structure looks like. So I'm going to pop this off the base and get it cleaned up and ready to attach to the top half. So as I mentioned in the video, uh, my process of setting up Getting the uh, orientation of your model is going to be key to the surface finish. This is the mishap. Uh, I actually started printing this and the orientation wasn't quite right. I would use that quick print option that I talked about and it actually had the orientation with the front of the model facing down. So all those support structures were actually attached to that front. So we lost a lot of that surface detail as you can see. Uh, some of the faces on the skirt here didn't quite print right. And then just trying to get all the uh, sprues cleaned up from the support would have just been a nightmare. So I went ahead and reprinted that piece uh, so that uh, we could have a nice, smooth, clean finish on the finished model. As Mark said, skirting disaster. <clears throat> all right, so a quick rundown of the finishing process I did. I joined the two pieces together using uh, super glue, your basic cyanacrylate. Uh, the gel variety gives you a little bit more working time. Uh, once the two pieces were glued together, I went ahead and I trimmed off all the support. Uh, I got the little nubs left over from the support sanded down. You're just pointing at his butt at this point. Uh, <laughs> and then once it was nice and smooth, I had just a quick sanding, uh, 400 grit, uh, you know, nothing too fancy. Uh, got, just got a nice surface area and then hit it with some high, pri high build primer. Uh, to give a good, uh, even surface. Cool. Um, Kevin's going to be coming back uh, to do the uh, to do the mold with us for this guy. Um, the uh, this has relief on every side, so we need to be extra careful making this mold. This is a hero piece, so uh, we're going to do this upright, and uh, we're going to do uh, we're going to do a different process that you haven't seen. So that's going to be coming up. What's that process, Ooh. Kevin? We're going to be doing cold casting on this piece. Uh, so cold casting is a quick uh, way to make your pieces look like metal. It actually uses a fine metal powder that you mix in with your resin, and it can be buffed to a shine. So it gives the appearance of an actual metal piece. So that's going to turn out really nice for this guy. So that's going to be coming up in an upcoming video. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. Kevin's going to be with us at the RPF party that we're going to be going to soon. That's going to be like in another month or so. We'll have that video coming out. He'll probably help us interview some other people. Um, we will. The, uh, be sure to like and subscribe and stuff and follow us on Facebook. Here and there. And yeah. <laughs> I think I was actually the first subscriber. He's making so. it up. No, fact. You, really? Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. It's real. <laughs>